The purpose of this video is to explain how to safely transport a fridge lying down and to prove that other websites and videos that give different advice are wrong. Fridge manufacturers have been telling us for decades that fridges have to be transported standing upright and that if you do happen to lay one down, then you have to leave it standing upright for hours afterwards before turning it back on. Well, it turns out that those claims are false. They were invented by fridge manufacturers to sell more fridges. Very few people have the means of transporting a fridge standing upright when they're moving themselves or if their old fridge breaks down and they would prefer to buy a second hand one. So they buy a new fridge and have it delivered. The issue has nothing to do with the gas or coolant inside the compressor or which side the door hinges are on. It's all about oil. There's oil in the bottom of the compressor. It's like the oil in a car engine. It's there to lubricate it and keep it cool. You have to make sure that the oil stays inside the compressor and doesn't get into the coolant lines. As long as you do that, you won't have any problems. When you get to the other end, you can safely turn it on five minutes after standing it back up. There are two supposed reasons why a fridge has to be left standing upright for hours afterwards. The first is so that the oil can drain out of the coolant lines and back into the compressor. Well, if you transport the fridge on the correct side, then all of the oil stays inside the compressor, so that claim's invalid. The second one is so that the oil can settle down. Well, when a compressor's running, the oil gets sprayed everywhere inside. It's more dispersed and unsettled than when a fridge has simply been transported on its side. Yet you can safely turn a fridge off and back on again five minutes later. And look how runny it is. It only takes a few seconds to drain back to the bottom of the compressor, not hours. So that claim's also invalid. Most compressors have three pipes coming out of them. One is a short stub that's used to fill the compressor with gas initially. Ignore that one. There are two other pipes, a thin one and a thick one. The thin one is the high pressure discharge line where the gas gets pumped out. The thick one is the low pressure suction line where the gas gets sucked back in again. Sometimes the suction and discharge lines come out opposite sides of the compressor, like this one. Other times they come out the same side. When transporting a fridge lying down, all you have to do is make sure that the side of the compressor from which the thick pipe emerges is facing up. That's it. And how do you remember that? Just think of a certain part of the male anatomy. And remember that if it's thick, it points up. So why does the thick pipe have to face up? The thick pipe runs directly from the evaporator in the back of the freezer down to the compressor. After it passes through the wall of the compressor, it just stops. It's open on the inside. There's a gap between the end of the pipe and the inlet to the cylinder intake. If you tilt the fridge so that the inlet pipe is facing down, the oil will pour straight into it. But it's not just that. The only way that oil can enter the discharge line on the right is via the inlet muffler, and it's always located directly beside the suction line, as you can see. So if the suction line is at the top, then clearly no oil can enter either pipe. So it's vital that you keep the thick suction line facing upwards. If the suction and pressure lines are both on the same side of the compressor, like this one, then you just make sure that both of the pipes are facing up. It's when the pipes come out opposite sides that there's an issue. Other YouTube videos on the subject claim that the thin pipe has to face up. They claim that if the thin discharge pipe is facing down, then oil can flow into it. Well, they're wrong. The only way that oil can get into it is via the gas inlet and the two reed valves. But that's physically impossible under gravity alone. First, I'm going to prove that oil doesn't come out the discharge line under gravity if it's facing down. It only comes out the suction line if that pipe is facing down. Okay, first I'll try to get the oil out through the thin discharge line. It's physically impossible. Now watch what happens if the thicker suction line is at the bottom. I'll try it with another compressor that's still working, as I'll demonstrate in a moment. We'll now tip it the other way and you'll see the oil coming out the suction line. If the oil makes its way along the pipe and into the evaporator, the fridge is likely finished. That's most likely to happen if the fridge is transported on its back. The suction line always connects to the very top of the evaporator. If the fridge is lying on its back, the coils in the evaporator will be horizontal. The oil can flow into the evaporator and around the bends as the vehicle accelerates and decelerates and goes around corners. When the fridge is stood back up again, the oil won't run down to the compressor. It will run down to the bottom of the evaporator. No matter how long you leave it standing upright, the oil is never going to climb uphill to the top of the evaporator and then flow down into the compressor. When you turn the fridge back on, the compressor will burn out due to lack of oil. 
I know that for a fact because I destroyed two fridges that way before I realised the problem. I'll now cut the compressor open so you can see for yourself why the oil can only escape via the suction line and not via the discharge line. This is the discharge line. As you can see, it isn't open on the inside. It runs through the compressor wall, then up and down in a series of loops and into the cylinder head, whereas the suction line is open on the inside, as you can see. The electric motor drives the piston up and down. It sucks in the gas from the muffler as it goes down and pumps it out the discharge line as it goes back up. For oil to enter the discharge line, it has to go through the muffler entry at the top, through the two reed valves, down through the discharge line here, defying gravity to go uphill here, and yet the oil is all down here. So how is it going to get from there up to the top to go through the hole at the top? A fridge technician claimed that if the suction line was facing up, then the oil could slosh around inside the compressor all the way to the top and then fall down into the muffler inlet. He claimed that that was why the inlet pipe has to face down. So let's test that theory. I'll first show that it's a working compressor. This compressor happens to have both pipes coming out the same side, but the muffler will still be directly adjacent to the larger suction pipe. You can hear the motor banging around inside the casing, but it doesn't come off its springs as some people claim it will. I'll now leave the compressor standing upright for five minutes to let any oil drain from the muffler, which is what I recommend. If oil has managed to slosh up into the muffler and make its way into the cylinder head, then it should blow oil out the discharge line. It's still working perfectly and once again, no oil came out the discharge line. So I think that debunks the sloshing oil theory. Gravity doesn't force oil out the discharge line. The author of one of those other websites pointed out that temperature differences could cause pressure variations inside the system due to the volatile nature of refrigerants. If a top mount fridge was in the sun, for example, he said the gas in the evaporator could expand generating an increasing pressure in the compressor. He claimed that that increasing pressure could force oil into the discharge line if it was facing down. The pressure in a compressor will also be increasing just after a fridge has been turned off, as the high pressure in the condenser gradually equalises through the capillary tube and evaporator. It can't equalise the other way due to the one-way reed valves. So the question is, can increasing pressure in a compressor force oil out the discharge line if it's facing down? It should be obvious from this diagram that increasing pressure won't magically force the oil to climb up from the bottom to the top so it can enter the muffler and discharge line. But I'll now test that. I'll first show that it's a working compressor. I'll use a tyre pump to simulate the increasing pressure. No oil comes out, as you can see. I proved previously that oil doesn't come out the discharge line under gravity if it is facing down. I've now proven that it also doesn't come out if there is a pressure difference in the system. So that confirms that transporting the fridge with the suction line facing up, as I recommend, doesn't allow oil into the discharge line the way those other websites claim. So what about their recommended method, which is to have the suction line facing down? I previously proved that that will always allow the oil to pour into it. We now have to test what happens if the suction line is facing down and there is a pressure differential in the system. This diagram shows that the muffler inlet will be below the oil, meaning in theory the pressure should force the oil through the muffler and out the discharge line. Once that pressure is removed, any remaining oil in the compressor should then pour into the suction line. 
So let's put the theory to the test. I think that speaks for itself. I've now got oil from one end of the workshop to the other and that compressor is finished. The cylinder head will be full of oil which is incompressible. If I turn the compressor on it will likely destroy the reed valves trying to compress the oil. If it doesn't do that it will force a large amount of oil into the discharge line. Once it reaches the filter dryer the fridge is finished. As I said earlier, it was the author of one of those other websites who raised the differential pressure issue and claimed that it would force oil out the discharge line if that line was facing down. I have just proven that the reverse applies. Following their advice will always fill the suction line with oil and if there is a pressure differential, it will also fill the discharge line and destroy the fridge. So what about their claim that given long enough, the oil will drain out of the discharge line and back into the compressor? Well, that's impossible. Any oil that has been forced past the outlet reed valve can never come back because the valve is one way and no oil in the cylinder can drain backwards because of the one way inlet valve. Even if the valves weren't there, the oil in the discharge line would have to flow uphill through these loops to come back. They also claim that the oil will drain back into the compressor from the suction line. I explained earlier that if it reaches the evaporator, then it is impossible for it to drain back. But have a look at these fridges. See how the suction line drops down low after leaving the compressor? How is oil in that line going to drain uphill and back into the compressor? That's also impossible. The oil will stay there until the compressor is turned back on, which leads me to their claim that the oil will then be harmlessly sucked back into the compressor. That is the inlet muffler. You can see from that any oil that was in the suction line isn't sucked into the compressor. It is sucked directly into the muffler. And as you can see, the muffler leads down to the cylinder head. Numerous compressor patents out there relate to keeping oil out of the muffler. The oil sprays all around the inside of the motor when it's running. If you look at this ridge here, it is referred to in one particular compressor patent. Its intention is to direct the oil that is running down the side of the motor, direct it away from the inlet. So the fridge manufacturer goes to all the trouble to lodge a patent and put a ridge around the muffler inlet to keep oil out of it. And those other websites claim that, oh, there's no problem just sucking the oil from the suction line straight in through the inlet there. Luckily, the muffler design prevents most of the oil from reaching the cylinder head. As this test with water shows, the oil drains out of holes in the bottom and doesn't make it through to the cylinder inlet, but it's designed to block small amounts of oil. If the volume of oil sucked in exceeds the internal volume of the muffler, then oil is going to end up in the cylinder head and discharge line. The only thing left to do is to lay a fridge down with the thick pipe facing up, of course, and take it for a drive, and then show that it still works fine afterwards. I'm choosing a French door fridge because quite a few websites wrongly claim that they definitely can't be transported lying down. I'll take it for a 10 minute drive. I'll cut some parts of the video to save time. Around a roundabout to try and slosh the oil up into the muffler. Hard acceleration. Sudden braking. Over some car park speed humps. few sharp turns to get the oil sloshing around. Feed humps. Get that oil sloshing around again. To load a fridge this size upright in a ute takes at least four strong men 
and if you aren't experienced, you risk it toppling over. You need them at the other end to unload it as well. I'll now leave it five minutes before turning it back on to allow any oil that did manage to splash up into the muffler to drain back into the compressor. So let's turn it back on. I'll see if the phone picks up the motor noise. I'll put a thermometer in it. You can see that it's reading around 23 degrees. I'll come back in about an hour and check it. As you can see, it's already down to minus 10 degrees. So much for the myths that you can't lay a fridge down, especially a French door one, or that you have to wait 24 hours afterwards before turning it back on. So what about some of the other supposed risks in transporting a fridge on its side? Can it damage the compressor mounts? No, it can't. The mounts on all fridges can easily withstand the weight of the compressor on its side. Can the motor inside come off the springs that it sits on? No, it can't. There isn't sufficient room between the motor and the inside of the casing. Can the internal electronics be damaged by the pressure against the side of the fridge? No fridge has the electronic components mounted on the side, so that's another myth. What about French door fridges or bottom mount fridges? They're no different from normal fridges and there is no reason why they can't also be transported lying on their sides. Transporting a fridge upright is always the best option, but if it isn't possible or practical, then it's completely safe to transport it on its side, providing the thicker compressive pipe is facing up. When you get to the other end, you can turn it on five minutes after standing it back up. If you move the fridge using a trolley, make sure the thick pipe will be on the high side when you tilt the trolley over to keep the oil inside the compressor. 